Hello and welcome to the Experience Podcast. Uh, I am a multi-dimensional spiritual being that's having this human experience. And my name is Neil. And joining me today is Dennis and Michelle, uh, two very special people that I've met on this journey um, from birth until the present moment being right now. Um, so I'm super blessed to be in the presence of both of you. Um, Dennis, if you like, uh, introduce yourself and then uh, you as well, Michelle, and then uh, we'll continue and fall into it. Yes, yeah, so uh, as Neil said, my name is Dennis, and I am a flash of light in a moment of time. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm, uh, hi, yeah, I'm Michelle. Uh, I am extremely blessed to be here. I think this is really cool. <laughs> So, um, what was your inspiration um, for being on the podcast? Um, I get I get little intuitive things, and one of them said, "Yeah, do this." I I kind of just do whatever I feel inspired to do at the moment. Awesome. Uh, I, I really love that and I can like relate and resonate to that because um, the majority of decisions that I've made um, have been made like immediately and they've been made in the sense that I haven't taken that much time to process the decision that I made. Um, it's more so been that when the time came to make a decision, I, I felt within myself and I felt, okay, like what would love do or, or what is the next step for um, my personal evolution that is going to um, radiate and illuminate outwards and have an effect on other people. And so with making decisions from inspiration like that's that's really on um, this podcast is a decision made from inspiration yeah yeah totally. i really I, I i like to do things that people and people will tell me that I'm not, but the best decisions i've ever made were last minute and from inspiration I, I get the the nudge from the universe and, that, and then I jump. <laughs> I run. <laughs> yes. Um, what's your perspective um, on the universe itself? Um, I would love to hear uh, your insight and your feel into what this thing is that's happening and, and that we're experiencing in each moment. So my take on the universe is it's actually everything is like just one big giant ball of consciousness and the and the universe is just try is we were all um, actually just all a part of the universe. The universe is that every little thing is is a part of the universe and the universe is just experiencing itself and um, Consciousness is expanding, and we're all growing and expanding together, and getting more, more. Because the the the, in, the nature, the na nature of the universe, is infinite, meaning it's constantly expanding, and so there are no limitations to anything. The only thing that limits us is our mind and beliefs. Whether or not in the, what what we can do, and to know that just is so incredible, so freeing because I didn't always know that, and but since I've learned that, I'm like, 
And I see that. I've, I've seen, I felt, I've been in a moment where I'm like, holy shit, I'm God. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's so much I'm sorry? Go for it. I, I love where you were going. Oh, yeah. And, and it just... And now that I understand how the universe really works, it's so counterintuitive, I guess, not counterintuitive, but counter to everything we ever get taught. Society teaches that it, it's just, now that I know that, now that I've break, broken through to the other side, <laughs> um, I, life is so incredible. I, I was living in night, and now I'm just, everything feels the same because I can do anything I want and it happens. <laughs> when you see you crossed over to the other side, Michelle, like what was that transition like? Like what did like what did that look like, or what was that transition? Well, I was living um, just a normal life. I had a normal job. I was a speech therapist. I had a family. I had a house. Um, I, I was constantly back my thoughts and emotions. And, and then I, it got to a point where it was enough. And I hit rock bottom tried to kill myself uh but it wasn't it wasn't planned it wasn't like i'm like oh i'm gonna kill myself no i it was in such a moment it was a moment of rage and just i was done i was done I took a broken plate and hacking at my room and then after that i just it was like just boom, and then I was okay. Okay, something's got to something's got to give because I didn't want to. Do it. My inner being was like, okay, you're done, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and and, um, and through that, I've had I've had multiple near death experiences, and through that, and and, and realizing that life has so much more to life and, and just breaking through and learning. I, I, and I and, uh, immerse myself in everything to learn about spirituality and awakening. And I just, I massive awakening through a process called access did. Um, and I taught how to not believe my thoughts and try to defend them and um, just basically live the life I never thought possible. My moment of really the probably the biggest moment I had was I was still in Arizona. I'm in Florida, Arizona, and the universe was just giving me nothing because I, I was I had already uh, like awake. I was already free of suffering, but then the universe, was like, okay, next day you're, you're ready for the next part of this journey. And so I I got the impulse to get up and move. So I left my 16 year relationship. I uh, quit my job as a speech therapist. I had a life, I had like a little family. Uh, a house and, and a job and and I left everything got rid of everything I owned or sold it which I just mainly gave it away and whatever what fit my little Prius I had less than three hundred dollars I just drove across the country for three days until I got to Florida and when I got here I had no plan no plan I just knew I had to come here and when I came here I, I didn't have a plan, but I just lived in a tent in the middle of a mad forest, Ocala National Forest, which I found out later was the same forest that the author of the Experiment had his awakening. And, um, and it was this incredible journey. I lived there for two months in a tent in the middle of the forest. 
just bliss out because I'm finally free. <laughs> and and then and then I I was able to basically attract my dreams. I, I dreamed of here and now I live in a amazing location right in the bay. Uh, at St. Petersburg, Florida. And I basically imagined living on a vacation for the past year and a half. <laughs> and um, just happy, happy, happy. <laughs> yeah. That is phenomenal. I just want to say, like, I, I actually just want to give you a round of applause. Like, that is Thank you. Badass Thank you. right there. Um, <laughs> like, to. First of all, like having a relationship for that amount of time and then just choosing to um, start anew and, and start to um, ask yourself, what do I want and how do I want to be present? How do I want to present myself to the world? And, and not only just asking the questions, but then taking the radical action to actually incorporate these new things um, into your life, like that is absolutely phenomenal, and, and I commend and uh, respect you for that. Thank you. Yeah, it was definitely one hundred percent of the and when from the moment I left it, to like the moment I I, I was to the moment after I moved here, that was probably a total of why well, I left there was a middle of the and I moved here May 1st. But even after I got here, I was in high or low just because I was like completely non resistant to just give I had I had nothing. I had nothing. So I was like, okay, I have nothing to lose. Here I go. <laughs> okay, universe, I love you. And it was nothing but amazing the entire time. Even when so when I was in the forest, I, I had a tent and then it started storming and my tent flooded. Like it was it would have to the mind to the normal people would think it was horrible because my tent flooded. What the what little stuff I did have was getting soaked and open and I was like I, I had no idea what I was gonna do, but I was okay. I was okay the whole time. And then after that is when I got this place that amazing happened. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so uh, going back and right before you made those decisions and, and right before you ended the relationship and you moved and you actually followed your heart and your dreams, um, what was the catalyst that caused a change in perspective and, and caused a shift in your awareness to where before this was, might not have been an, even a possibility, but then all, right now, like when you made that decision, not only was it a possibility, it became your reality. So what was the catalyst um, for you to have that shift in awareness and and perspective. Well, when, when I hit rock bottom, I knew what I was doing was not, wasn't working out. Like, okay, enough is enough. What I'm doing is not something separate. So I basically, I, I, I just, the universe, God, and God, um, get, show, um, get, show me an advertisement for a program called Access Plan. The modern life meditation plan and I decided to take that program and it really showed me how to shift out of my mind at any moment at any time and realize that I'm not my and the, and also to receive my emotions feel them transmute them and, and then just see the gift that they have and now, I, like my triggers are between, and uh, when I get triggered, it, it doesn't last very long at all. Amazing. <laughs> like I used to spend days, days, and weeks just crying. And now, like if, if, if I ever do cry, it's only for like a couple minutes. <laughs> 
and it's usually when I when I find out then what I before was suffering. Now it's like a real. I actually feel tears of joy every time I cry. <laughs> That's so profound, and, and that's how my experience has been with crying. Like it initially, when I actually, because there was a time frame growing up where I was taught to not cry and to hide my emotions and to be a man, and to when I would show my emotion, it was said man up, and um, and then I had a shift in perspective where um, I now see men that show their emotions and present and feel into them as being the manliest man of all. And, but as I began to cry, initially it was hurt and it was a lot of hurt that I was crying out. But then it, it switched to like, now when I cry, it's like this release of energy and it's like joyful crying. And it's, and it's oh, beautiful. Years of gratitude. I'm oh, sorry. Go for it. I was just saying, isn't it so beautiful? To be able to feel it. It's a beautiful experience. And it's tender because you can actually feel it instead of fighting it or, or putting it away, or shutting it down, or running away from it. <laughs> yeah. Just. So, what does Michelle do on a daily basis? Can you take me into um, a day in your life? Okay. Well, um, so I, I basically, I, mani I manifested because I used to work and, and like suffer. But now I'm just like, I want a life of ease. And I, so I I somehow made a lot of money. So I feel very fun. And plus the universe, the infinite nature of the universe, I understand meaning that abundant, it's infinite abundant forever. And I never struggle with that because it's always, always coming. Just... I, just because I trust it is. And when I, so basically I get to do whatever I want, whatever I, I, I live, I manifested living in vacation in this beautiful area. So what I'll do is I'll sleep until I feel like I don't. Then I, I do, I usually do like a breathing meditation while I'm in bed after I do that. I just go breath. And basically, body just appears <laughs> but I don't know how I do that for it. and then um and I get up I'll eat or or play with my cat I have my cat and I'll go out to the pier and watch the dolphins play in the morning and talk with all the neighbors and it's just it's, it's wonderful and then I can just do read or or classes like I like to do a lot of personal development classes just I'm always in a constant state of improvement I I always always working on my if I, if I see and, and lately like I'm, I'm like I don't want to see anything I want to change anymore you know and so um but when things come up, because some things are deep, deep after a while, then I can have a little And I just, yeah, I do. I I, I kind of wait for the universe to take the lead and then just follow. <laughs> I, I like to take opportunities. I love to, I love adventure. I love just exploring, seeing what kind of experience I can have. What is the universe going to give me today? I don't know. <laughs> Did you always feel like the universe had your back? No, not at all. Uh, in 2019 was when I, um, was it 19? Yeah, 
Before then, I had no idea. I had no trust. I had no higher power. I had no, I was very, um, didn't believe in anything magical. I didn't believe in anything spiritual. I only believed in coincidences. And everything happened. Uh, everything had a scientific explanation for it, which it does. But then I didn't realize there's a whole other world out there that that is so incredibly magical and 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 fun and exciting, not predictable. <laughs> and I, I like, it was like, oh, really? <laughs> And, and I, I spent a good year just like looking at everything and being like, everything was like brand new. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of, I attribute it to God, my, my, um, <laughs> my family pushed me. I, I think my, Sixteen-year-old daughter, bad with a dad, but her and her dad, and I don't place any blame on them because I understand it was actually me and my belief that caused them. To, but uh, they, they, they really pushed me to stay okay, and so I'm so out of them. And then animals and beings and fairies and angels. <laughs> Do you know how many fairies were in the forest I lived in? <laughs> it was awesome. I would love to hear about some of them. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. It was so, like, every experience day in that forest was so magical. And the lesson, and I really, like, I even had a, a period where a colony of black, because I had spilled some sugary liquid underneath. The table I had in my tent, I had a big tent, and um, and a huge colony of ants like invaded my tent. They were black ants, and I, I just sat there and watched them. And then I, I had a whole experience of, of I'm like, oh, they probably see me as like a god to them because I'm I'm so big that they can't even see me, but they know I'm the presence there. So the whole experience. I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a benevolent god. This little colony in my tent, but I don't, I don't want them to be in there and like bite me and stuff. But I want, so I want to get them out of my tent without, without kill them. I, so I had to come up, I had to get them all out, and it was, it was incredible. Like, and it was because I clapped and I was like, well, that's probably like thunder. And I slapped the bottom of my deck and they would like bounce around. Like, oh, that's earthquake. <laughs> and I blew up. That's the wind. <laughs> oh, I was like, but because after the, uh, most of them filed that, but there were a few, like, a few that wouldn't leave. <laughs> so I had to figure out how to get them all <laughs> I finally got them out, and it was it, that was a huge moment for me of, of, of like how difficult it is to try to be a uh, manage a whole colony. <laughs> it was just it was fun. <laughs> yes, I I could entirely see that. Um... Like here in uh, Costa Rica, we have like the leaf cutter ants, and they'll like blaze trails through the forest of just all these ants, just like one after the other, and each with this piece of leaf that it's carrying, and that's contributing to its colony. But like if if you put like a stick or something in their path, um, they'll just like you just go right over the stick and continue, and yeah. it's like. There's no stopping these friendly ants. Like they're just gonna do their thing, and and they're gonna be ants um, regardless of what's going on around them. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. I love seeing all the different wildlife here than there was in Arizona because I don't I don't 
the same kind of <laughs> but they're more tropical. So it's, it's interesting to see the difference. I love little creatures. Cool. So, how long have you lived in Costa Rica? So, I'll ask that again. How long have you lived in Costa Rica? Uh, three months. Three months? That's it? You just moved here? How, how do you like um, it? I would say I'm still transitioning, but uh, like I absolutely love it. Um, I, I really wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Like there's the one thing that I really appreciate about here is there's so much greenery and like wherever you look, there's trees and there's nature and there's flowers and, and it's everywhere. Um, it's, it's definitely like modernized as in there's roads and cars and, and cities. Um, but where I'm located, I'm not around any cities. Um, and even with the roads, it's like both sides of the roads is just forest. And it's just so incredible to see and to be around and, and just have this natural abundance just surrounding myself on a daily basis um that's really been my experience and it's very meditative also in the sounds that emanate from this nature um like it seems like cicadas are going like maybe 10 out of the 24 hours a day and possibly even more like there's just this hum of, typically we hear this hum of cars and vehicles and um, where I used to live at. And here it's a, it's a hum and it's a hum of nature. It's a hum of cicadas. It's, you, you literally hear the wings of birds flying. You hear like the, the flapping of them. And, um, there were, the other day, there were two moths that were like tapping on each other. And have you ever heard those magnets where you toss the two magnets up and they make a clicking noise <laughs> as they come together? Um, that's what these moths were sounding like. And it was just a clicking through the, through the air. And so it's just been really incredible uh, being here and experiencing these new things and um, allowing myself to integrate and learn. That's awesome. It reminds me of when I was in the forest. I heard a lot of nature. And I even I wrote a poem about like everything that I was hearing and, and and every all the experiences that were happening. It was really cool. <laughs> so what was your childhood like? Like growing up, how many brothers and sisters did you have? Um did you have a mom and a dad in the same household? Um, uh, what was that experience like for you? Well, growing up, it was poverty. Um, my mom and dad separated when I was three, but my mom met another friend, another man and, um, when I was six, and then they had my little sister when I was eight. And, but I was going back and forth with my mom and dad a lot. And, um, it, the, my mom's situation was not ideal. It was sick, very, a lot of fighting, a lot of, a lot of not, not healthy relationships and treatment. Um, but my dad was my favorite grace because he's like an angel. <laughs> he is, he's right now, he passed away in 2014, but he is my angel now. So I would like I'd be able to escape that as every other weekend, which was good until I was fourteen. Then I moved in with my dad full time, and, um, and then when I was um, seventeen, I was I I, so I was fourteen and seventeen. I moved around a lot because my dad we we just couldn't hold a job, and um, we, so we didn't we kept having around a lot. 
a homeless shelter at one point. I lived in a car at one point. I lived with my best friend. And then when I was 17, uh, I was hit by a truck while I was I was a Jeep, hit by a Jeep while I was walking to school. And I, um, it, I, I was hit on the side. I had brain damage and I was in a coma for five and a half. That was my first near death experience. Um, I was in a coma for five in the hospital for five months. Well, like told to be in a hospital for five months. That's a long time. And I could walk my own for a year. I had to learn, relearn everything over again. So that that moment was like the first time my life just completely changed. It didn't have an awakening moment, but since because of that narrative, I was like in a state of euphoria for like year and a half after that. Where I was bliss. I, I was just so happy. <laughs> My little gimpy self. <laughs> and then um and then I was in uh, I met my um boyfriend who well, I was in a relationship for six years. We had a daughter and then I lived with him and we were happy. We were happy for 10 years and then after at the point of 10 years I it started I started my unworthy started um, becoming so apparent in my, in my reality that my daughter and her boyfriend, they were both treating me like really poorly, like just so much unworthiness. And, and this, the, this whole thing was trying to get me to wake up. I see that so clearly now, but I was so stubborn <laughs> and so just I I was I was always a very positive person so I was always trying to make things make it the best but it until it got so bad where I was just like okay I'm done I uh, something's gotta go. and then <laughs> floated into another awakening <laughs> or into uh, this whole new life I live in Wow. Um, that, that was my life story. <laughs> yes, that was great. Um, beyond great. Uh, what was your experience like with um, like religion? And were you taught about God uh, growing up? My mom grew up Catholic. She um, grew up her her grand or her parents are um, Italian. They they are very. She went to Catholic school until she graduated high school. Then she moved away from that. She didn't want to continue. Catholic. So she moved away from that, moved to Arizona, met my dad in a happy. I had never taught me anything at all. I knew about religion, like Christianity, because my babysitter would, I would go to church with my babysitters or, or whatever, but I never. It never made sense to me, like what they were teaching in the in the Sunday schools and stuff. It never. Made me. I, I was like, this. I don't. It's not right. So no, I, I didn't. And then I grew up agnostic. My my adult entire adult life, I, like it rocked and then started. I was like, what? No. And now I have the closest relationship, like source, just directly. Christ consciousness flow. It's awesome. I, I He's like, it. finally. I love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it's right here. It's right here. It's not, it's nowhere else. We don't have to go anywhere else. It's right here. And it's the most incredible feeling. <laughs> Are you saying, Michelle, that I don't have to do that? I don't have to do anything to be I'm sorry. with God? Repeat that. Did you just say that I don't have to do anything to connect with God? Nope, you don't. You don't have to do anything except be. <laughs> That's because it's right there. You don't have to go out. You don't have to go uh, do yoga and, and do all this stuff. All you have to do is 
because it's right here and you don't have to buy like i i love crystals I, but you don't even need any of that all you really need is shift out of your mind into your true one and that's all that's it <laughs> So, where are you living at currently right now? I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is crazy because before I understood the universe work, before I knew about it or whatever, I, I was on vacation visiting here, right across. I was, there's a place called John's Pass, which is the bay from my apartment. And I, I, I was... Um, I was with my mom and my uncle, and I remember looking over the bay towards the area that I'm li living now, and I was like, oh my gosh, it would be so nice to live here. Like, what is it nice to live here? Oh my goodness. That was just a fleeting thought. I, just, I thought it, I felt it at that moment. I was just like, wow, that's me. And I just never thought of it again after that. Because when I, and then universe does, did its thing and rearranged itself so that it could put me on the path to get here. <laughs> I got here. I followed my inner, <laughs> yes. I followed all the, all the clues and, the <laughs> and it just led me right here. And I didn't even realize this was the place that I, because I wanted to live here. Universe put someone who lives here in these apartments. Um, in my mom's family, and my mom lives in the forest. Also, <laughs> she's another forester. Um, and um, and 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 made friends with her. That I could meet her, and she could be like, "Hey, you want to come live in these apartments?" I had no idea the apartments were even in the same area that I wanted to. That I had that dream or whatever. That I was like, wow, I want to live here. And then it wasn't until after I moved here and I was I was over at John's Pass and I was looking over the bay and I'm like, oh, my apartment's are right over there. And it hit me. I'm like, oh, I just, this sounds like this is the same place. I was like, I want to live there. <laughs> and I do. So, so and, and which is crazy because this is, um, vacation area this is where people come to vacation where people come to retire rich people come to retire like um i know money is a material thing but but honestly like without a lot of money you can't really save the world so i'm gonna be a billionaire because i i have big aspirations and i want to be able to get the world with money <laughs> I mean, that's probably just a limiting belief, but whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so you found me an affordable apartment in between millionaires. Like, millionaires live here. <laughs> and uh, and like, this place is really cool because I, I walk outside and it looks like a tropical paradise. There's peacocks right across the street and the park right across the way. And the, um. Which is funny because peacocks have always been one of my favorite animals. And I'm like, look what I manifested. Like, look, I feel like in a dream because I go out to the birds and I'll see dolphins playing together right here, right up next to the pier. And, and like, it just looks like a couple of paradise out there. And I'm, my next manifestation is going to be a castle on an island in the Caribbean. I don't know. I just have a thing with castles, <laughs> and um, and the Caribbean is my happy. And then from there, I can. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to like vibe, you know, my my peoples. <laughs> did you? Did I hear you correctly? That you said you wanted to, that you're manifesting an island. A what? An island? Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to live in a castle on an island in the Caribbean. <laughs> and maybe, maybe I, I'm not going to think of all the houses 
because that's not that's not how I'm gonna get it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna let the universe rearrange itself again and set down the path. <laughs> That is awesome. I would love to come visit you once you have when you have your castle. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> that would be so cool. And and you know what's crazy, or or not crazy, but amazing is like multiple times I've been shown that yes, Michelle, you're gonna get your castle. I, I I like I was in my mom. It in was a camper. She was in a camper in the middle of the forest. I was, and um, I was in her camper, um, making coffee or something. And and I, and I was just daydreaming about the castle. And then on the island in the Caribbean. And then on her TV, she has like a a, a screensaver thing that shows different pictures of places and the moment like I was making the coffee and I was daydreaming I had to see the clock was 444 which is the um time it was at 444 in the morning and the I had my first initial spawn it's just like oh you know have you ever had that, that like, you're just like oh my God. just realized how powerful you are oh my god um and the, but I saw four 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 on the clock, and then I looked over at the TV, and there's a picture of an island. And I'm like, "There's my island on the in the Caribbean." And then the next picture that showed was a castle on an island in the Caribbean. And I'm like, ah! "It was so incredible! It was just like, cause it was just me. I, I was the only one there, so I was the only one who saw it. But it was just such a magical experience. I love how." Amazing. And now I I know for a fact, I know that all this stuff is heebie-jeebie <laughs> beliefs. And maybe it is because most people don't believe it, but I am fully that what you believe true will be true for you. Even like if it's not true for anyone else, it really will be true. <laughs> and we, we just recreate our reality we, we have the ability to create our reality as long as we don't put people into it. We create our heart's desires. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, like, imagination time. Like, so, um, who's on that island with you? Are there people there? Are there animals there? <laughs> I want. I wanted to kind of start my own little community. Just look at my job. I, I've, I've, I've been dreaming more and more. I've been, been adding on. I wanted like just a whole new a tribe, kind of what you guys have, your little village does have. And because I just want to live with my tribe of everyone who has the same kind of mentality, everyone who understands how the universe works. Because there's so many people who, who are still suffering still believing limiting thoughts and really we're limitless it's only a belief yes. and I, I just want to be around people who understand that you know and for the most part i i just stay by myself in my in my magical little apartment just me and my cat she's amazing I have little ants that come visit me because I think ants really like me, especially the ones that were in my tent. <laughs> um, and then, uh, like, I, it's just, I, I, I'm in the, the where I live, the area I'm living. Um, generally, people generally, there's still a lot of suffering going on because I know that like they're not as consistently happy and. Uh, Everyone just knows of me as, as people. They'll, they'll have people come to me. They're like, go talk to Michelle. <laughs> You're not having a good day. Just go talk to Michelle. <laughs> and and that, that kind of makes me feel like I am helping the world. I am. My dream is to help the world. And I am living my life, my dream life. It's raising their 
I just want to do that by tribe. <laughs> Awesome. So with your communication, like um how like how has your communication been with um friends and with family? And then also how has your communication progressed? And um has it stayed the same or ha how has it varied over the years for you? Uh your ability to communicate your ideas and things that inspire you and, and how, how is, has that journey been for you? Well, I, at first, because I, I grew up and I, and before this, all my friends and everyone around me had no magic at all. I call them muggles. <laughs> um, and it was very difficult, which is why I, I, I did make some new friends who were more open to it. Actually, I could have conversations with, and they wouldn't look at me like crazy loons. Um, but I, I, that's when I really got the nudge to you know you need to go. To go, and um, I came here, and people are a, a lot more open, and I, the the people here are happier and they're more awake, where. And, um, but there's a lot of them still don't under fully to the extent that I, I, cause I basically rewired my brain to just be magical. <laughs> and so generally most people, they, 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 they know nice and they know that I'm happy. They know that I'm not gonna hurt anybody ever. And so they don't bother me and they don't like put me down or break me or anything because I'm past that. I, I have no unworthy left. And so I don't get treated poorly anymore. But they do think my ideas are a little out there. <laughs> they call me crazy, which I did have a, a little bit of thing with. I got because the guy I was seeing, I was talking to him because I checked. I travel sometimes and some so sometimes I just I, I just it flows out and I'm just talking and, and the guy I was dating he was you're out of your mind and I'm like I that triggered me because I was like what <laughs> but but then then I was able to be like no but I, I was like you know what I, I actually am out of my mind and I'm glad I'm out of my mind I have a tattoo that says don't believe your mind <laughs> what does your tattoo say it says, don't believe your mind, because your mind will lie to you. <laughs> so whenever, whenever I, I understand that whenever my mind, because sometimes my mind will tell me stupid stuff, and I'm like, why are you, <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> but if you, because that's what really, this tattoo represents my awakening, because it just uh, don't believe it is one of the access that so there are in the program access points, there are five access points five things that you can that to shift out of your mind five, five areas one is just noticing your existence and and then thoughts like if thoughts come and go you just let them but don't 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 just let them, but don't you don't have to buy them. And uh, noticing your existence, um, small breathe B, which is just a like a stop by, breathe in through your nose, out your mouth, and then notice your existence. And then there's a BT, which is before the thought, where you're just aware that you're having a thought. And then my favorite is don't believe your mind. That's what I have a tattoo. And it's where you don't have to believe your mind. Oh, you have to be. A, I don't believe you. And it just, for me, my thought, like it takes me into that ultimate, you know how when you're in, when you meditate and you stop your thoughts or whatever, or, or clear, like I can do that instantly at any time because of all these access points. And then, Simple G is just 
noticing your breath and getting into the frequency of pure attitude and love <laughs> and ex for me excited excitement because the flip side of pure is excitement and every emotion there is it's there's a flip side to it and once you learn how to receive and feel that negative emotion it flips and then you or at least for me I, I experienced like happiness, joy, excitement. Excitement is big for me because I used to be super anxious and and just worried about things all the time. Uh, now I'm just like that all the time. <laughs> so, what was the name of that course again? It's called Access Points: The Modern Life Meditation Plan, and I, I'm I'm gonna start. Um, taking like sales calls to promote it. it helped me so Wow, good for you. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then like now you're, the way you communicate feels very open and, and very heart centered and, and just speaking um, how you want to communicate like, and did that come um, from this course or did it come from like you doing other activities? Uh, where does this, the way you communicate now, um, what would you say has been a catalyst for you to speak and present yourself how you do? Yeah, well, this, 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 the, the access point has really helped me to tap to my true ones and that, the stream of intelligence. So yeah, uh, I, it's mainly just been accessing and I, I, I never really fully, I don't really meditate in the traditional sense, sit down with guys. I do that before bed, bed or right before bed, right before we, but otherwise I, I can I can access and and do that like a, it's called a, a, a modern so do that in my daily life as I cook and cook and be or 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 just um, do my daily activity while I'm accessing and 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 the accessing is is a form of meditation. Oh. Wow. That's a, it's a different way of like looking at meditation and, and doing the inner work that um, that's the first time I've heard about the access points and, and yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm really glad to learn about this and hear how it's uh, helped you like um, let go and be in the flow of the moment and uh, just be able to express from that and not get caught up in the judgment and in the ego and, and the things that our mind likes to tell us. And then yeah. to convince us that we can believe that we're right. But the reality is like when we don't believe anything, we're, we're actually opening up to learn something. <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, so that it's like a whole new world when you can recognize that, like, even at the pinnacle of knowledge, like, that has its limitations because there's, you're learning how much you don't know at that point. Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> um, uh, I so we're looking at another three minutes. Uh, for this connection. Um, so I invite you to, if you have something that you're like, just you're wanting to share, um, take this. Yeah. Uh, and go for it. Maybe, maybe. So, fears uh, because of access points and because I don't have to believe my mind, and effectively, minded, like, that, that's a way to. Totally, I don't even have to believe in here. My limiting, I just say I believe you, and then uh, 
and, and just into the thoughts. And in doing that, I, like rewired my brain to only have the beliefs that, that beneficial and grow. If it's a belief that feel good, I don't have to believe it. And so I, I'm able to I have a fundamental, fundamental core understanding that no matter what happens, it's supposed to happen. Everything that happens is supposed to happen. And everything happens for a reason, for every reason. And um, and so it happens, it's, and if it doesn't happen, because it wasn't supposed to happen. And it's all for the best. All even even though our limiting our limiting perception will be like, oh, this sucks. It's because we haven't looked at the higher perspective of it. And 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 so I I generally don't believe in bad or wrong or I I won't believe they're wrong or bad. That kind of judgment, I, I only think see things as good because I just understand from deep, deep understanding and knowing that it is good. It's actually good. <laughs> and the only thing that keeps us in fear is our mind, is our thoughts. Whenever we are with our, our heart, it's love. But the mind is fearful. And, yes. and fear isn't real, not real. Like even if they're right in front of your face and it's scary and it's screaming at you, just don't believe it. <laughs> Don't believe it, because I've I've had like when the the time when there was my tent was flooding and everything, but I just didn't I didn't believe the fear of it because I would have been like, oh, where am I gonna, where am I gonna live? I have to go get get some shitty sorry some sucky job and 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 suffer and and you know and have to try to be homeless or try to struggle. Instead, I was just like, okay, 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 cool. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what's next? What's next? <laughs> like, okay, I, I can take it. <laughs> I love that. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. And thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your life and out of your day to be here and uh, to have yeah. this communication. Um, your time does not have a price tag. Um, it's invaluable what your time is. And um, so I, I really greatly uh, appreciate you being here. And um, that goes for you, Dennis. I, I greatly appreciate you and respect your um, decision to be here. And um, so we're, we'll close it here. Um, All right. Thanks again, Michelle. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. For such a good experience. I love, I love being able to sit there and have a conscious conversation because there, there's, it, there's not a whole lot of people who can facilitate this kind of conversation and follow it. And awesome. awesome. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, continue to stay blessed. Same. Same. Okay. Hey. <laughs> See you.